Hi, I'm Kyle Danielson and I work for LumenVox. This section is going to be an introduction to speech applications. I'm going to go ahead and cover some ideas that we'll be expanding upon in the next few following sections about how to design a speech app and what are the ins and outs of, of that process. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is what do we want to do with speech applications or what do we do with speech applications? And in fact, as it turns out, we do the same things with speech applications that we do with touch tone or DTMF applications. So I might, for example, when the caller calls up, try to route them to an appropriate place for them to go. Or I might try to provide information to them, such as getting the status of an order and delivering that to them. Additionally, I may try to complete a transaction, which is a little bit more complicated, but I might try to move money, say, from a savings account over to a checking account. Now, how am I going to do this? Well, in fact, what I'll do it is the same way I do it with DTMF applications or touch tone applications. I'll have an audio prompt. And that audio prompt, the purpose of that audio prompt is to tell the caller what they need to do to progress the call along to their goal. So this prompt will say something along the lines of, um, with a DTMF application, it would be a menu of choices. With a speech application, it would be a question. Now, once the caller responds to that, um, which is the caller input, I'll go ahead and either progress the call along, or with speech applications, I got a little extra thing in here where I might actually um, confirm what they said. Because with speech, there's a little bit of um, question as to how sure we are that what we report them saying is actually what they said. And based on that number or that score, we might do a confirmation. But the call at that point can move on. Now, the next thing about this is, um, what are we going to add with speech? What is speech actually going to, um, what's the reason why we want to put speech in our app? Well, in fact, it's because we have more options with speech, okay? We have um, the ability to say, ask them what the city and state, uh, a city and state question, such as, um, please tell me the city and state that you'll be traveling from. And the person could respond back with San Diego, California. Now, I might be able to get that kind of information with a DTMF or Touchstone app, but I would have to ask something like zip code. And the caller really may or may not know the zip code to where they're traveling. Now, um, as I said before, an audio prompt in a Touchstone application is a menu. But I did make the distinction that in a speech application, it's a question. So what does that mean? Well, I have to ask questions to the caller, and the caller is going to respond back to me. Now, this is distinctly different from a menu. If I have a menu of nine choices and I try to ask that as a question, it becomes a very, question to, a very hard question to ask as well as it becomes a very hard question to answer. And that's really not appropriate. So what ends up happening is I need to design my application so I have easy questions to ask and the caller can respond in an easy fashion. And that's really what's going to make a good speech app. So in this process of asking questions, um, the voice can have more personality. It's very hard to put a personality into a menu. But when I'm asking someone a question, I can be friendly, I can be serious, I can be concerned. So I have a lot I can work with. So what ends up happening is, in effect, you can make a personality that is branded towards your company. This is the way you want your company perceived. And that's a very powerful thing that you can do. Now, some of this does impose, again, a greater responsibility upon the application developer to do a good job. And the reason why is that callers will answer questions appropriately. And what that means is, if you, talking to another person, could answer the question in a way, then that means that's the way they'll answer on the phone. And why do they do this? Well, people see talking computers all of the time. Okay, they see them on TV, they see them in movies. And the thing about these talking computers are, is they always seem to be artificially intelligent. So you have an interaction between the caller and the computer that is very much like a human-to-human -human interaction. And this is really the point of reference of most people when it comes to a speech application. So if you ask a question like, where do you want to go? And the person could very legally say, I want to go to my mother's house. Or I'm going to upstate New York. But you weren't prepared for that, right? Or even if you had a grammar that covered all of the possibilities, you'd have to program what those possibilities mean. So what we end up doing is we try to narrow our questions down. And we say things like, please tell me the city and state you'll be traveling to. Now, I can predict where that's going with. So these challenges are going to be talked about in the next following sections. And what you'll find is um, there are tricks and tips in making this happen. We'll talk about prompts, we'll talk about grammars, and we'll talk about um, really the best practices when it comes to creating your application and deploying your application. Um, thank you very much and I'll see you soon.